Finally back from QuakeCon. A little bit sooner than the rest of the fam, but... Oh my god, it has been such an amazing weekend. And I wanted to do a little... I know I don't... I've never done these kinds of things before, but... I wanted to do a, a vlog. I just wanted to talk about it. I wanted to go over just the whole weekend. It's been one of the best weekends of my whole life. I had an incredible amount of fun. I met so many brand new people, and... I just wanted to talk about it and show you guys some pictures and bring you there along with me. I really have no outline for this. I have no plans. I'm just going to be stream of consciousness vomiting into my microphone for the next 10, 20, 30 minutes. Who knows? But guys, QuakeCon 2018 was the real deal. It's a really incredible experience. And if you guys have ever been to a convention before, QuakeCon is unlike any one that you've been to prior. The community there, the family there is unlike anything else. And goddamn guys. I have that post con sadness, you know? It's like man, it's like I it's like I was on on high for for you know four or five days and now it's just all coming crashing back down to stupid slow reality. But man this was a vacation that I needed. This was a mental reset I really needed. So let's just go through the whole event, day by day, shall we? Thursday night, coming out of work. It's going to be my first day out there, getting out of work at like, you know, 3, 3 o'clock, leaving a little bit early because my coworkers are amazing and they did everything in their power to bend over backwards to let me even get to QuakeCon at all. So shout out to them who will never even see this. Thank you guys. Thursday night rolls around. I'm supposed to get to the airport around 6 o'clock. Flight is delayed, and delayed, and delayed, and delayed again. Does not end up leaving the airport until, oh, I don't remember, I think 9 p.m. Instead of the, the scheduled, like, 5.30, it left at 9. So I didn't get to QuakeCon until incredibly late on our very first night there. But it's all right. It's not a huge deal. Because, at least with that extra downtime, I got to go see my mom. Got to go take her on a really cute date, go out for some ice cream, and just spend some of that extra free time I had in a way I otherwise never would have been able to. So that was really, really awesome. We finally got to QuakeCon after some plane issues, probably around midnight, 12.30 in the morning. Had all my stuff all packed up to get in and go to BYOC, which is the bring your own computer area. So whenever you hear me say that for the rest of the video, BYOC is just bring your own computer. That is the actual LAN party part of QuakeCon. Got all my stuff packed up, ready to get in there. And of course, it's after midnight. There's nobody there to check me in. They want to make sure that they're tagging every piece of major hardware going into and out of that place. So that way they know nothing is getting stolen. Especially because people are bringing entire setups. You're not going to tear down and rebuild an entire setup every single day for, you know, an entire weekend. It's just not going to happen. Everyone leaves their things there at their station. So all the items get tagged. Security is out the wazoo, just trying to make sure that none of that stuff gets stolen and taken through. So I was able to bring my stuff in without a tag. They just didn't let me, you know, they didn't want me setting up. They didn't want me leaving it there. They wanted me to, to you know, pack it all up and bring it home with me. So that way I can come back tomorrow and go through the proper, uh, the proper checks and balances to get everything all put together. So that was fine. But that first night was all entirely just clerical, just getting myself into the hotel, getting settled, saying hello to a couple of people who were still around. We got to see Maggie. We got to see Tokyo Punch Out. Um, I think I think Chasmatix and Squeeze Toy were there on the first night as well. I don't even remember. But yeah, we were only up for maybe a couple of hours, got to bed. And that was whatever. You know, no pictures were taken. No cool stuff necessarily happened that night we just just were happy just to exist and be alive within the gaylord down in uh down in dallas well dallas ish it's in grapevine actually so we'll move into saturday here and this is going to be i think where our pictures and photos actually sort of begin um so coming into saturday that or was it or friday Friday. Coming into Friday, uh, that is when we had, uh, on August 10th, our Doom Eternal reveal. So, that was really early in the morning. I know 40 Lions was still asleep. Spuddy was still asleep. I mean, pretty much nobody else that I knew made it. Um, it ended up being... Here, let me go flip over to main, right? Do I want this button? I want this button, yeah. So, we came into... Me and Maggie were the only two that made it to that Doom uh, Eternal reveal. We were able to sit front row and go and see that. So, here is our view. We were a little bit off to the side, but we got to see, you know, the Willits himself. We got to see... 
Mr. Hines himself and everyone else from Bethesda and the Quake team, the Doom team, and uh, even the Rage team were up there as well. And it was a whole lot of fun getting to watch all that. I wasn't taking pictures during the event. I'm not going to be that guy. But I just took a quick one just to prove, hey, we're front row. We're up here. I got to see Tokyo Punch out up there. And that was a whole... Uh, a whole lot of fun getting to watch that reveal. Uh, on the walk down, we saw this one sign. Again, I'm not much of a photo guy, so if I only have like three photos for every day, I'm sorry, don't yell at me. But we saw this sign, and by we, I mean I saw this sign, Peace, Love, and Rockets, in one of the windows, and it's freaking amazing. I wish there was a t-shirt with this or like an actual poster I could buy. I would throw so much money at Bethesda, at id, at Saber, at fucking Tokyo Punch-Out himself, whatever. I would throw infinity dollars at, at whoever I could to make this a reality in my own house. I love this design so much. It's so stupid, but man, it was great. On the first day of QuakeCon, I was walking through some of the BYOC sections just looking at all the computers, and I found this guy who had a screensaver of nothing but waifus and almost hentai but not quite pictures with like just anime girls in front of the QuakeCon logo or the balls logo or whatever i didn't take pictures of all of them i kind of wish i did or just took a video of it but i got one picture so my dude if you're out there somewhere and you're seeing this video please sound off who you are give me like a freaking like photo album on imager or whatever of all of these backgrounds because that is hilarious and awesome and i loved it and uh, it was very, very entertaining walking by your PC every single day, man. I, I really did enjoy it. Here from that first day, once I got set up, this was my QuakeCon setup. All right? It's very high level. It's very advanced. It's very expensive. All right? Got like a $2,000 laptop in front of like the most like janky ass keyboard and mouse and microphone setup of all time. This is like the most expensive poverty setup that has ever existed and, and that is uh that is exactly how i captioned this photo in our uh, in my tweet from from that day that is absolutely <laughs> it was uh really unfortunate because when i came in okay so you see this screen where it says frothy omen and i'm obviously just just made that with paint really quick right i, I don't know if maybe it's too bright i don't know i you can probably figure it out but my lock screen is just me writing my name and a smiley face on there in paint or something, right? Everyone around me had these really cool lock screens where, like, you know, we had Roxy Surf Chick. She had a picture of, I can't remember his name, the fucking guy from Jurassic Park that every woman loves. And he's got his shirt unbuttoned and he's there from, what the hell is his name? Uh, I can't remember. Anyways, um, so we had like a picture of that guy with her name on it. Maggie was right next to me on my left, and she had you know her name up on her screen. And then Chasmatics is on my right, and he's got his lion or tiger or whatever his logo is. And you know everyone's got these like sweet lock screens showing off their PC while they're not there, and who's sitting there, right? And I didn't have one because I wasn't that smart. So what do I do? Well, we got paint. We made the perfect poverty background for a poverty setup. It was really, really nice. That first day, I got maybe like an hour of BYOC time. I played a little bit of Warframe with a couple of dudes from my uh, Discord that I've been hanging out with a lot lately. So shout out to Jabbly and Modus and uh, Muscle Lollies and Cars. I don't know if Matt by Matador was there. I don't think he was, but you know that whole group. Thanks guys for carrying me through Warframe lately, and it was really nice to get a couple of matches in with you despite all of our weirdness there. Um, oh, and yeah, actually, now that I think about it, at like 3 in the morning on Thursday, well, I guess it's technically Friday, but that first night I arrived, I was playing Warframe at ridiculous hours with the dudes. I don't know why, probably because I'm an idiot, and I stayed up way too late doing that, and that murdered me for the next day, but hey, it's fine. I got to hang out with, uh, with all my friends that weren't there, so that was really, really nice. Man, I feel like this is just rambling and no one's even going to continue listening at this point, but I don't give a shit. We're talking about the entirety of QuakeCon. I'm going through every single moment of this event i don't care if you listen to the whole thing or not this is like catharsis for me going through the whole thing and just talking about it anyways what else happened um so on that first day of actual time at byoc what else did we do oh well you know i kind of did some casting and stuff i think that was pretty cool i guess you know maybe you know i was on the stream doing some casting and we made it and we did it and it was awesome so at like what i think four o'clock central time 
We were scheduled to do some community casting for the 2v2 tournaments going on for Quake. So Maggie and I were paired up and we were there. And there was some drama with, you know, times changing over and over. Maggie being at panels and we were being divas about going on at our scheduled time and yada yada. And everyone else did everything they could to move their times around so that way we could still cast together because... You know, it kind of sucked. Like, we were scheduled for four. Maggie had a panel at 2.30, and then she got kicked off and couldn't do it. Well, we get, she was going to get kicked off from the panel kind of. Be, well, okay, that's not even the right way of saying it. She was going to get kicked off from streaming because she was at the panel because she wasn't going to be there. And, you know, we kind of, well, she raised a fit about it, and we fixed it and solved it. Whatever, it's fine. Went on at, we went on at four pretty much like we were supposed to. But the really cool part of the story, actually, a lot more positive part of the story, is that I got called to head backstage for this event to do this casting at like 2.45. So it was over an hour before I was supposed to actually be on camera uh, being talent for a little while, right? So I didn't get a chance to eat lunch. I didn't get a chance to, you know, use the facilities. I didn't get a chance to clean myself up. I was just not prepared. I figured like, you know, right when I was getting up to leave my seat in the BYOC to get ready for this. And by the way, that was like my only time in BYOC pretty much for the whole weekend almost. Um, I was just getting ready to get to get up and go, you know, take care of myself and get ready, right? That's when I get the call. I'm like, hey, you got to come back right now. It's like, dudes, I haven't eaten. I'm hungry. Like, I, I'm not ready. Like, I, I thought I had over an hour. And they're like, nope, you're coming back right now. We need you now. So I said, okay so I gave up on everything and came back and you know it was like 3 3 15 and I'm just standing around there behind the scenes like waiting uh and like there were there are like two pairs of casters ahead of me still it's like I think it was um Chasmatics and Squeeze Toy who were on stage at that point in time and then Jep and Via were waiting to go on for the next set and then Maggie and I were going to be the ones following that so I'm sitting back there an hour before I'm even supposed to be sitting in the chair, just doing nothing, you know, like no one's checking in with me, no one's like giving me the rundown for like, you know, like what is expected of me on the stream and all this and that, which, you know, it eventually kind of happened very briefly and like the rundown actually just ended up being, hey, you good? And I was like, I guess so. And they're like, good, all right, you're 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 good, all right, we're ready, you're gonna be on soon. It's like, and that was like the entirety of my rundown, so... I mean, that was kind of weird, but it's okay. It's fine. I know how to cast. I've casted numerous tournaments before. Like, that's not a strange thing to me. I was totally comfortable at once I was up there. That's a-okay. That's fine. Whatever. But the cool part about it that I was alluding to earlier is that I mentioned to uh, OD, my good buddy OD here. And let's actually bring him over on screen here. Let's do this. Uh, not Nope. 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 This one. That's the button. OD, right here on the right. This guy is a legend. OD is a living legend. This guy heard, he caught wind that Frothy didn't get lunch. He didn't eat anything since breakfast. So what does he do? He goes out of his way. He runs out of, pro out of production. He runs downstairs to the food trucks. He picks me up some Korean barbecue, runs it back upstairs finds me a place to eat like brings me food and drink and he just sets me up and he like puts me aside and like shoes people away from bothering me just lets me eat for a little while lets me like you know ready myself up for this actual cast like gets me water finds me coffee like gets me all the things i need like od like took care of me from like like every step of the way before this casting started and like it would not have gone anywhere near as well as it did if it weren't for od so Thank you, OD, for, for doing what you do and being an amazing human being. I really appreciate you. And, of course, I'm sure you guys, if you are Quake fans, recognize the other figures here. We got Mr. 40 Lions. We have good old Spuddy, which we got to see unmasked all weekend. And you guys didn't, but we did. Spuddy is a, uh, it's a very handsome man, let me say. Very, very handsome. Finally, good old Ketchup. Wearing that good old Combo Breaker shirt. You guys may or may not know Ketchup, but he is a caster for the ESL. He covers Quake, and he covers fighting games, namely Mortal Kombat and Injustice. I don't know if he's covered other things, but I'm sure he probably has within the ESL space. But regardless, Ketchup and I go... Well, I wouldn't say that saying we go way back is totally appropriate, because we kind of don't. Um, consider us very long-term acquaintances, like eight nine year acquaintances maybe like something roughly like that um we used to both post and i'm sure he still does on a forum called test your might which is all about fighting games uh mainly mortal Kombat and injustice now 
a lot of you guys may not know this about me, but before I started with, with FPS and doing guides and stuff on YouTube, I was actually all about Mortal Kombat. I was all about Injustice 1. And I used to play the heck out of those. I used to go to tournaments for those. I was never very good, you know, and I, my, my goal was never to be, you know, even top 32 material. I just wanted to go and have fun, meet people, play games, you know, and just do that whole thing. If I could win some matches and help some people learn the game along the way, awesome, you know? That's kind of like my, my exact position within the Quake community now. It's like I'm not hoping to be the best or even, like, among the top 10%, but as long as I'm good enough to help somebody out there get better and improve and, you know, and I can be part of the community, I'm happy, right? So Ketchup and I are, you know, we know each other from these forums, right? He was the he was the sector guy, right? I was one and Sector is one of the characters when um in Mortal Kombat, if you're not already aware. I used to play Smoke. And we got a chance to do some money matches. After like seven years of neither of us touching MK9, which is the which is the second most recent Mortal Kombat, the one that we both got started on, after like maybe five years, I don't know, of just not even touching it whatsoever, we got a chance to finally play and verse each other in Mortal Kombat. I got destroyed. I was expecting no less than to be completely and utterly destroyed, but that's okay. I had a lot of fun. I learned more about the matchup between my main, my dude, Smoke, in his main sector than I have in my entire time of playing Mortal Kombat. I learned more about it in those like 30 to 45 minutes. We didn't put a whole lot on the line, just a drink, no big deal. So the next night at a party, very, very drunkenly waddled my way over to him, bought him a drink, and that was lovely. That was good, fine, whatever. But man, this is like a highlight of QuakeCon for me right here. This money match, right? Like it's, it was like, I was like so hyped for the whole thing. We had like three people behind us that are betting money on it. And then as soon as we pressed start, they all walked away. They were gone. Everyone's putting money down on us. And then like, as soon as we hit start, they like immediately lost interest and just walked away. I don't know why, I don't know where they went, but they disappeared. And uh, no money was lost on me, thankfully. I, I was not the cause of any lost money. Uh, so that was, uh, that was that was very very nice, but yeah, guys, some Mortal Kombat time with Ketchup. Big shout outs to Ketchup. He was uh, he was a bud throughout the entire trip. Really happy I got to meet him. Oh no, I wasn't supposed to close that. Oops, Control Shift Tab maybe. Uh, I think this works, right? Shoot, yeah, okay, no, good enough. Uh, whatever. All right, I kind of lost my spot. Oh well, it's fine. So. We have a whole lot more. That was just like our first day over at QuakeCon. We have so much more to go through here. Let me see. Like, what other photos do I have here? So this is like, okay, I'm looking through OD's pictures right now. Oh, wrong way. So this is all like the setup. Here's a picture of 40 in front of a huge uh, statue of one of the main enemies coming out of Doom Eternal. I didn't get a picture in front of it. I kind of wanted one. Maggie asked me like four times, like, hey, want to get a picture? Want me to get a picture? And I was being a butthead and kept saying no because I don't like pictures. And then I just never got a picture because I didn't, you know do it because i suck so that's the thing i'll never get but no big deal everyone else got pictures in front of it it's whatever it's fine i think i'll live without being in front of a picture a statue of a demon mr machiavelli this guy is one of the casters one of the esl guys i think he's esl i assume he's esl i don't actually know that but i just kind of assume he is uh this dude is a wonderful human being extremely well spoken he knows more about me than I know about myself and had some very, very kind words for me and I'm very happy to have met him and I look forward to seeing him again next year. Mr. Jahar, my God, I'm not, okay, so I'm not, I promise, I'm not, I'm not gay or anything, but Jahar, oh my God, I want to touch your hair, but I can't, I never did. Jahar is fucking amazing hair, I love his hair. Anyways, moving on. Where's our next picture, was it, was it this way? Am I confused? Okay, anyways. Uh, I don't know these people. I think this is Boove. I think this is Quake Angel. I never met them. I kind of wanted... I, I liked... I saw this... I saw Boove with his... Uh, is this Boove or is this someone else? I don't even know. Maybe it's not Boove. I don't know. He's he's an official dude with the cool um, name tag. I saw his, his balls hat. That was awesome. But I never did get to talk to him or anything. It's all the players area, so this is a, a little secret, or not secret, but kind of cordoned off area right next to the main stage where all the Quake players were playing uh, all the off-stream parts of the 2v2 tournament and just doing warm-ups and whatever. We got Pi Hero over here. Um, I don't recognize a lot of these other players, but hello Pi Hero at least. 
Rafa and Dehang. This is, again, I'm just stealing from OD right now because I'm not a big picture guy, but uh, OD was able to sneak over to Rafa and Dehang. We got Mr. Mortal Emperor here. Look at this swag all over his jacket. Mortal Emperor and um, Tokyo Punch-Out are also just, they're, they're, they're good people, man. They're, they're, they're good people. They're... And I'm going to say that about pretty much everyone that was at this event. But, you know, these guys are all swagged out in their jackets with all their flair all over it and just shit. It's just these guys were instrumental to my enjoyment of the weekend, especially Tokyo. But, dude, big shout outs to Mortal as well. Uh, I, I spoke with him on a panel alongside of, of Tokyo, of course, which we'll talk about later. But uh, it's really, really, really uh, nice experience to meet these guys. I really loved hanging out with them and getting to talk to them. And here we have some backstage photos for you guys. So this is like, so when I was talking about the casting before, when we were having issues, like me and Maggie with our timing. So this was uh, our whole little setup back here. So we got Mr. Jahar back from his production desk. Jahar is a wizard. Jahar is a literal wizard when it comes to production. And my God, I would pay so much money to just like fly to his house and just like sit down and like be 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 vomited upon by the good news of vmix which is a which is a production software much like uh, obs or um xsplit but like you know professional grade and like actually amazing it lets you do really cool things like that is something that i am very acutely interested in um in learning about so maybe one day i can sit down mr jahar and i'm looking at my screen right now this little preview of, of this i think i'm kind of dark let me bump my light up really quick because i think i'm a little dark right now I, I kind of jacked up my camera settings a bit from QuakeCon, so apologies if everything is weird. I know like my, f my framing isn't right. Whatever, it's fine. You guys get to see. Can you even see it? It's kind of out of focus. Oh, wait, it's this way, XD. Um, there is that picture, picture, the statue of Mr. Scale Bearer from the Scale Bearer edition of the game, which we just got in the mail today. It's pretty dope. It's probably out of focus. You can't see it, but it's there. It's cool, I promise. Check out the picture on Twitter. It's really, really cool. But yeah, this is our secret backstage area anyways, where we were doing all of our casting from. Is right behind the main stage. Got Zoot back there. We have Ashley, who shout us to Ashley. She took care of me all weekend long as well. This this woman is amazing. Uh, Mr. Chasmatics, Squeeze Toy, doing some casting alongside of Jay Kaplan, one of the main ESL guys who... Man, I feel like he just wanted no part of... Of, uh, of the height battles between me and Zoot. The Quake community is tall, by the way. Like, me and Zoot, or rather, Zoot and I, excuse me, grammar teachers, English teachers out there, and uh, and Kaplan, we're all 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, I just barely, 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 barely edged out um, Zoot. And we also, was one of the other, uh, one of the other uh, guys from the event, Clockwork, who, shout out to Clockwork, who was at, like, I think he was at both my panels, and I talked to him numerous times about the event, like, super, super cool guy, really happy I got to meet him in particular, um, he was also up there in height, too, I think he was, like, 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six. I think he's, he and I are about the same, I think he might have me beat by just a little bit, like, someone was comparing our heights, and I think I just barely one or was equal only because my hair is big <laughs> like if, if i didn't have and he's bald right he was bald he's shaved and i have really big hair so i think that gave me an unfair uh, edge in the fight but i think if i didn't have that i think he would have had me beaten but you know don't let don't let dizzy sky hear that i know no one's gonna know what that means except for dizzy sky himself but yeah it's a thing her, I think this is quake angel doing her slash cosplay i didn't get to see this in person i only saw maggie's slash cosplay it's really sad I didn't get to see this one, but hey, whatever. This guy. I never got to meet this guy or even see this guy. But he is from, uh, I think, a Japanese team called Paco the Respect for 2v2. And that is just my absolute favorite, favorite name from the entire event. For those of you guys who are old Quake heads, you of course know the Respect the Paco meme. And uh, these guys would name themselves Paco the Respect. I, I never got to meet him, but I just love the name. Here we have, like, the Holy Trinity, just the gods of this community cast from the first day of the event. Uh, we have Mr. Tokyo, Punch-Out, Zoot, Jahar. Running the show, as always. Jahar getting prettied up for day two, of course. We'll, 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 we'll skip back to this stuff later. This is all day two. Even get a little sneak preview of the gauntlet trophy that was given away for the 2v2 winners and the duel winners. But let's just switch back to some of uh, some of my pictures here. Was it this way? Yeah. So we have, uh, from the first day, Maggie took me back over by uh, some of the art area. 
um, for all the like, there, there's an art competition that was going on at QuakeCon, right? So this was Mr. Zeus. Uh, I don't, I forget the numbers after his name, but X O U S Zeus. Uh, he is like the premier artiste within the Quake community, and this is his incredible painting of the Doom Slayer and Ranger. And it's called Something Worth Fighting For. Of course, both of these characters reaching for their bonds within their respective worlds. Daisy the Rabbit for Doom Slayer and Ranger's photo of his wife and family. Really, really beautiful. And you guys should totally check out the full resolution version over on Zeus's Twitter. Some other arts and crafty stuff. This was one of my favorites, the eyeball from Ruins of Sarnath. This thing was so cool. I didn't, I was not smart enough to, you know, get a picture of the actual artist's name because I am dumb. So whoever made this, shout outs to you. This was my personal favorite outside of everyone else's stuff. Well, I'm, rather outside of Zeus. Zeus was my number one, but this is a very close number two. I love this so much. This is so cool. I never know how people are able to be to like craft this stuff in three dimensions like this and actually make this turn like this video game stuff into a reality. This this is really cool. This is easily my number two for the whole event. Moving into the second day though. Let's go ahead and move into the second day. We have good old 40 lions. Actually, no. You know what? I take that back. We're not moving to the second day yet. We're not moving to the second day. We're sticking with day number one. Wait. No, we're not. We are moving. To, we are moving to day two. But we're moving to day two. But we're and by day two, I mean like my real day two. Like the day I, I came in was like day zero. I don't count that. Cause it doesn't matter. But but we're moving to day two. But we're not going to talk about this beautiful photo quite yet. So what we're going to do instead is talk about my first panel. Can you go to the full cam, please, stream it? Why do I gotta hit the button like four times? Anyways, okay. We did a panel at noon on Saturday. And that was all about helping new players to Quake learn the basics of Quake. It's called the Quake Academy. So we covered positioning, map knowledge, the flow through maps of what kind of weapons you want to pick up, when you want to pick them up, how you want to get there, what's important to get, cycling items, cycling weapons, controlling the map, circle jumping, strafe jumping. I mean, it's all your fundamentals, all your major pillars of what makes Quake into Quake. We covered all of that and we taught a few dozen people all those basics. We had a lot of questions, people coming up to talk to us after the show. But my favorite part of the entire thing, and I was kind of hoping that this... Uh, this would happen naturally throughout the um, throughout the vlog so far, but it hasn't. So let's go ahead and just get that manually here on my phone. Some guy during, and I, I, I totally forgot your name. I totally spaced on it. I'm sorry, but you and your wife were awesome. And please leave me a comment. Give me a shout out if you watch this because I want to thank you guys again. But some guy in our panel, he did not mute his phone, right? He got a text or something. And he had this notification sound play. And I heard, I, let me play it again just to make sure you guys can hear it. I'll hold it up to the mic a little better. So that went off incredibly loud during the, the middle of our panel. And I pretty much stopped everyone right then in there. I was like, you, talk to me at the end of this panel. I need that badly. For those of you that don't know, I don't know how you've made it this far in this video and don't know what that scream is. That is BJ Blazkowicz in Quake Champions. Whenever he takes damage and that sets him to 25 or lower HP, that is the scream he lets out to just as a as an audio audio cue that he is very damaged and near death. And that is a huge meme within the Quake community during both days of tournament play. Whenever a BJ was on screen, and he started screaming like that. Everyone in the stands would erupt in, ah, to follow it up. And if you watch the stream, if you watch the cast, you'll hear many times, like, like the, 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 I don't even think that, that we were mic'd up. I don't, I don't know if the crowd was even mic'd up, but if they weren't, that's even more impressive because from the casting deck, you could hear, ah, like every like couple minutes. And it was amazing. It was so so great and i heard that 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 notification sound and i needed to get it and i have it and as stupid as it sounds that was one of the highlights of the event for me man it was really really great <sighs> this has already gone for nearly half an hour let's try to speed this up and and wrap it all up here um i met a lot of really cool people at this event a lot of good food was consumed lots of alcohol was consumed but man I needed it. It was a really, really great just mental reset a mental refresh for me just to get myself back 
into a more uh more reasonable place a lot more a lot better of a mental place and i had a great time met a lot of a lot of awesome people you know huge shout outs to maggie that was a huge a huge blast getting to meet maggie throughout there 40 lions as well spuddy as well i wish i would have got to see you two guys more i didn't but you guys were great um shout outs to oh my god i'm gonna have to remember everyone's name and i'm gonna feel so bad if i forget a single person um schwak is a big part of um like the holy i don't i like there's like like basically the holy trinity of of 40 lions and schwak and modus those three guys schwak and like modus was not at the event modus is really behind the scenes and he does a lot of stuff for me and for 40 lions and i'm sure for other streamers as well uh schwak is just a really good friend of um of those two and he streams as well so you can check schwak out he is a really really cool guy i had a blast hanging out with him in particular watching some quake during the 2v2 section of the day um we have all kinds of other people, but I mean, th those were like some of the standouts that I hung out with the most from the whole event, but Ashley, Maestro Ashley, Follow Ash, uh, Rotten Rose is amazing. Like Rotten Rose and Ashley are, those are, again, like I was saying before about some other people, I'm going to say about everyone, just good people. Just, they're fantastic people. I'm really happy I get to meet them and hang out with them. Huge shout out to Chasmatics and Squeeze Toy sitting next to me over in the BYOC and putting up with all my drunken BS and... Uh, Squeeze Toy was uh, very, very fun. Let's say Squeeze Toy was very fun during the first uh, the first day or two of the event. We she was uh, let's just say that that Squeeze Toy was turning some heads with some of the hilarious shit she was saying and doing, and I wouldn't have it any other way. So Squeeze Toy, much love. Kaz, much love. Thank you for attempting to get me a webcam and USB hub to stream with from the floor. I know it didn't end up working out the way we wanted it to. Um, oh my god, our Whataburger adventure that we went on was amazing. I had my first Whataburger, and it was glorious. It was so good. I'm so happy that we went. Uh, we also got Ketchup, his first Whataburger, and being able to impress a British man. I think he's British. With, uh, with some good old American meat. It's good stuff, man. What made me really happy is that the girl at Whataburger came up specifically to Ketchup, and she asked him, Ketchup? It made me giggle a little bit. It was really good. Just because, you know, his name is Ketchup. And, you know, he just totally, like, played it off, like, totally cool. But I was, like, I was like cracking up internally. And Forty was cracking up not so internally about the whole thing. It was really, really good. I made sure to tweet about it immediately because it was, it was great. Oh, man. There's so many stories from QuakeCon that I could get into. But, man, a lot of it is just you had to be there. And you got to know everyone. It's all just Quake fam. So, I guess I'll just kind of try to wrap it up there. Like, guys... QuakeCon was absolutely amazing. I had a splendid time. Thank you so much to everyone for just being the, the, the coolest and most amazing group of people that I've ever had the fortune of meeting. You guys have really become family for me over just a couple of days, and I will be counting down the days until next year's QuakeCon. So if you're still here, you're still watching this, if you're part of QuakeFam or you want to join QuakeFam, do everything in your power get to QuakeCon next year. You don't even need to worry about bringing your own PC or monitor or whatever. Like, you don't even need to play in BYOC. You can just go around and hang out with other people who are playing there. You can rent a computer, rent a monitor, as long as you have a seat. Like, that's all you need. You don't have to go through the rigmarole of bringing your whole setup if you don't want to. It's just a, just an amazing experience. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. And I can't wait to go back next year. And um, I know I've, I've been... I've think, uh, thanked maggie a million times but i want to do it one more time just because maggie was pretty much like my keeper this whole event she like she had all of her own stuff going on the entire time but made sure that she took time away to make sure that i knew what i was doing i knew where i had to go that i was meeting the people i needed to meet she introduced me to some some really higher up people within esl and within bethesda that i never would have ever gotten a chance to meet or interact with otherwise like she helped me make a lot of connections I otherwise wouldn't and really, like, Maggie was, like, standout in my enjoyment of this event just for just for taking care of me in all those other ways that, you know, just, just, just like, like, I met, like, half these competitive players, like, um, like, Pi Hero is a big one. Uh, that actually really stands out in my head for some reason. Like, I, I never would have met these guys. There was, uh... Who's a long hair guy? Sib. I met Sib. I went up all kinds of other uh, pros like Rafa and DeHang. Probably would never have had a chance to meet most of them. 
uh, without her help. So thank you, Maggie, for all of that and for being my keeper. Special shout-outs to Modus, uh, who was not even at the event, but for just, you know, staying in my DMs for the whole time, you know, helping me to, you know, keep photos straight and to just keep the event going straight and to help. You know, he wasn't even there, and he was helping to organize me and 40 and everything else. Oh, Cake Champions. Shout-outs to 40 Lions. For running, for helping to run Quake Champions, by helping to run, I mean organizing and doing literally everything for Cake Champions. Um, I caught wind of it last minute, and Cake Champions was like this panel, panel, that we did, where we literally just bought, we literally just bought cake from Costco, and we brought it to the Gaylord, and we just served cake to like a hundred plus people. It was amazing, and uh, yeah. 40, thanks for doing that event. It was a whole lot of fun. Oh, Sean Baptiste. Awesome meeting you. If you're somehow watching this for some reason, that was amazing. Uh, getting to talk to you a couple of times. And I'm glad that you enjoyed your cake that we force fed upon you in the hallway at QuakeCon. Like there was like three of us working together to like <laughs> use one hand to serve and one hand to hold like 30 pounds of like gear that we were carrying out of there. Oh man, this whole event was amazing guys. I, I should stop rambling at this point before my voice dies right before my stream. But thank you all so much for enabling me to just be a, an actual human being within QuakeCon. Oh, I did signings at QuakeCon. Like, I had some, I had people literally come up to me and, like, take pictures with me and have me sign stuff for them. And, like, literally, what the hell? Like, I don't understand. That's so crazy. But it's all because of you guys watching. Thank you for supporting me and enabling me to do all this awesome stuff. And I can't wait to do it again. So, guys, thanks for watching. I'm signing off. We'll see you very soon on stream. Although you'll see this after stream, but regardless, either way. Thank you for being amazing. And I'll catch you next time. Take care. Have a good rest of your day.